Hi everybody and welcome to this YouTube fly tying tutorial. The pattern that I'm going to tie for you today is one that you can currently see. It's known as the rusty spinner. For those uh, dry fly fishermen especially that love to um, fish mayfly hatches, this is uh, you know one of those must-have flies that you have to have in your boxes. Uh, this is the last stage of the mayflies uh, and typically this is a, a fly that you can fish in the evenings uh, right at dusk. Hence why I'm going to be calling mine a high visibility spinner. Um, for the most part, uh, my fly is going to be very similar to a lot of those those that you may already find. However, I do have a few additions that I think um, might give you some ideas for flies in your own box. Uh, for instance, as you look at my pattern, um, I will have the typical split tails, and I'll show you a little tip on how to do that. I do have a biop body, which I believe is just a little bit more realistic. I do have some antron wings, and that's something I'll discuss briefly, but you, you, know, you can really tie those with a lot of different materials. I have a nice uh, dub thorax, but most importantly, I have this little piece of foam that we use for visibility whenever we're fishing this at dusk. So let me go over the materials. I'll put up the material list up on this tutorial, then I'll get into the actual tying of this pattern. All right, let's get into the tying of this pattern. For starters, I'm using the D102BL Allen Fly Fishing Dry Fly Hook. The BL stands for barbless, which is really awesome. Uh, this is one of my favorite dry fly hooks out there. Just a very sharp looking hook, and it is extremely sharp as well. I'm gonna be using some rusty ADOT uh, thread. Whenever you tie in your thread, you're simply gonna place your thread on and leave that tag end nice and long. In fact, I'm just gonna kind of hook that onto the left. If you have a material clip, that is something you can grab for it. Next time I grab some micro fibbits, a light done. I'm gonna pick out around four or five. If you get six, that's fine as well. You don't wanna to go too many past that. So for the spinner, this is the last stage and a couple characteristics of the spinner really relate to their tails. First of all, the tail is about two times the length of the body. Now, if you look online, if you read some books, um, that number can really vary depending on the natural mayfly. So for starters, you wanna make it at least one and a half times the, the length of the body. However, in many cases, it's gonna be actually much greater than that. I've seen many spinner tails that have been three or four times the length of the body. So keep that in mind. So I'm just gonna do a quick measure. I'm gonna tie them in. Check them for length. They're about the length that I'd like. I'm gonna tie back, lock them in place, I'm gonna make one thread wrap underneath them. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a biot. This is a turkey biot. I'm gonna be using the small side of these. So I'm just gonna grab one of these small pieces. Whenever I tie my biots, I tie them in by the tip, and there's a clear and there's a white side. I want that clear side facing the eye of the hook. So I'm gonna tie it in by the tip. Oops, don't want that to happen. lock it in place, and then keep my thread right there. Because now I'm gonna come back to this thread that I had locked in originally. What I'm gonna do with that thread is, take my right hand and go around the, the hook. I'm gonna take two of those uh, micro fibbits and pull them to the side and bring this thread up through the middle, thereby splitting the micro fibbits. So I'll show you what they look like. Let me get that locked into place. So now when I pick this up for you, it's gonna to be tough to see this. Let me see if I can get these ones just standing a little bit more at attention. Now when I show you this from the top, you can see how I have that split microfibit tail. And that's one of those characteristics that you definitely want whenever you're dealing with the spinners. I'm just gonna wrap forward. I got a lot of thread and a lot of materials going on up there. So I'm gonna just trim those out of your way. Okay. I stop my thread about three quarters of the way up, and I do recommend using uh, hackle pliers whenever you're wrapping on this turkey this uh, turkey biot. So again, I'm just gonna start wrapping it up. You're gonna get a really nice and beautiful um, segmented body. It's gonna look extremely realistic. You almost wanna crowd your eye. It's gonna feel like you're crowding it. That would be about perfect, and I always go one more then I'm gonna just place my thread. Oh, let's see if I can hold on to this. Whoa, almost lost it. I'm gonna place my thread there, put in a couple locking wraps. Now at that, this point I can tie off, or I'm sorry, clip off my biat. Whew, save that one. And my advice at this point is to put a half hitch in just so you won't make any other mistakes like I just did. Next I'm gonna grab a small piece of foam. 
I have yellow foam. If you want to use pink, you can. Basically, take your scissors, trim it to a length and a width that you find acceptable. And I also have just kind of like a little, a little arrow point at the front. I'm going to tie it in at that arrow point so I don't build it up too much. So I'll lock that in place. Actually, I want to get that just a little further back from the eye. Right there is perfect. After I have that locked in, I go with my wing material. Now, in this case, I'm just going to be using some white Antron. There are so many great wing materials out there for these. Uh, I know a couple years ago, I was using some material that was the veil for somebody's wedding dress, and it was just wonderful material. It was very translucent. So I know you probably have lots of materials out there. If you'd like to share them via a comment on this page, you may. After I get these tied in, I'm just going to start figurating them just to really ensure that they are where I want them to be. But I'm not going to go too crazy with that because I'm going to be coming through with dubbing. Whenever I come through with dubbing, that will really be my locking point with them. So I just have them separated for now. All right, next I am going to grab some a little bit darker rusty dubbing. I'm just going to put a nice, I'm going to dub a nice little thorax in there. I do like the thorax to be just a little bit thicker than that body. So let me get some dubbing on there. I may have a little too much. If so, I'll just have to pick some off. Okay, so I'm going to wrap my dubbing back to where I had first tied in that um, that little high-vis foam. I'm just going to wrap forward just a hair. Then I'm going to, again, figure eight the Antron. Ensure that they are right where I want them to be. Then I'm just going to pull them back and tie off once by the head. So I'll show you what it looks like from the top. Next, I'm going to just take my foam, bring it down in front of those wings, and lock it in place. I'll put about five um, to lock it. I'm going to lift it up, place one in front, and put a half hitch to lock that in there. Next, I'm going to take my scissors. You want to trim this as close as possible, so I'm just going to pull it up a little bit, place a little trim, and now I can finish off my fly. It's your choice where you put your whip finish. You can put it over, if you'd like, over that little high-vis piece, or you can put it by the, um, uh, the, the front of the hook. It's really your choice there. All right, we have just about everything finished, except we have to trim our wings. I left them just a little bit long. So I'm just going to pull them straight up in the air, bring them back. I want them extended just about to the bend of the hook, a little forward, make my cut, and there we go. Now I'm just going to pull them out a little bit, splay them, just so we can get some, some nice visibility through them. And look at my tail, make sure it is still split. The tail is looking nice. I don't want it too angled up too far. Let me give you the 360 of the finished Rusty Spinner. So this is a look at the finished Rusty Spinner. Again, um, you can really modify this to, for your own needs and for your own uh, personal fishing experience and to match the naturals on your local water. Some advice I can give you, you don't have to use that buyout body. That's a really, um, that could be a little bit more difficult for beginning tires. You can just dub the body. You can also use thread. Don't be afraid to just go with that. Uh, make sure you get those tails pointed up. Make sure you keep them spread. And whenever you're getting that high visibility foam in there, really just ensure that it's locked in and pick a color that you can see on the water far away. Finally, whenever you're getting your wings, you know, play around with some different materials, see what's out there, see what you like, and see what fish is the best. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching this fly tying tutorial. I also thanks go out to Allen Fly Fishing for the use of their D102BL dry fly hook. You can check that out at allenflyfishing.com. If you have any questions or comments related to this rusty spinner, feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody, for watching this fly tying tutorial.